Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me again today. Um, a quite a lot of you, I'm quite shocked, watched my last tutorial on how to make your own paste. I'll link it down below in the description box. I'll also put it at the end of the video so you can just click to it after this video if you haven't seen it. Today is about another fun technique um, and I'm going to share with you how you can make your own sprays. So you can use just water if that's all you've got, but I'm going to share with you um, making your own shimmer spray uh, and doing this technique. I've toyed for quite a while with what I should call this. I don't remember what it's called. It's something that's been in the back of my mind for years, like eight years ago I saw this technique. Um, and I've played with it so much uh, over the past weekend. I've done loads of different things with it. Um, so I was thinking, do I call it the bleeding technique? That doesn't sound very nice. The runny technique also did not sound very nice. I don't know, put it in the comments if you know what this technique is called. Um, I'm not really sure. But I'm gonna share with you sort of the things I learned along the way and some of the things you can do. But the main goal is use what you've got in your stash and have fun. So we're gonna get started. <laughs> Okay, so what you're going to need is an empty spray bottle. Now, I've bought a whole bunch. I bought them on, I think I got these mini ones on AliExpress. They're not available anymore, but I've ordered another pack of 50 of them. <laughs> Don't judge, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so I've got another 50 coming from a different seller. I'll let you know how that goes. I got some bigger ones, I think also from AliExpress. I don't recommend the big ones. These ones here are 30 mils. And these ones here I think are 50 um, or 70, something along those lines. Um, I recommend the really little ones because sometimes your bottles clog and then it's kind of a waste of having a whole bunch of product in a big bottle if you can't end up using it or transferring it to another bottle. Plus, if you use up the whole bottle then you can do a different colour if you feel like it. Lots of different reasons. I like having little ones. It's also easier to store. So I'm going to have a lot easier of a time putting these little bottles somewhere. These are 30 mils. I would probably even go to 20 mils. So you need an empty bottle. So I've got one last little one here, which I'll use today. Um, then you need some water or mica powder. So I've always got my bottle of water on my desk. And I'm going to share with you how I make up my mica powder ones. Um, and sort of the solution I use for that. So, so far I have done a few colors. I've kind of just stuck them all together on this little thing. I will probably chop these into little squares and keep it handy, um, but I've labeled them with which colors I put in from my mica powders, um, and then I have sprayed them on. So I did, for example, I did this one twice just to kind of have a, to show you. So I've got tangerine orange, and now I've got the tangerine orange with two scoops of mica powder, and I've got tangerine orange with six scoops. And then I sprayed myself a little sample on some watercolor card so I could see what the six scoops versus the two are. So there's two, you get this nice shine, um, a slight hint of orange, this one you get a very pigmented color. So that was the first thing I did, was I had some fun and I sprayed some samples and I wrote down the colors. I kind of tried to do sort of one of each. I got a purple, a pink, an orange, a blue. Um, and then I just had some fun. I also got a gold and a white and a silver. I'm not 100% sure with where I should start in this video with you because I've been spending three days doing this now and I've been utterly addicted. So like my last video, I have got an absolute ton of samples to share with you. So please do stick around to the end because I've got so many ones to share with you and it will give you an idea of what can work and what might not work. So um, let's do our sprays and I'll share with you how to make the mica spray. Um, but you can most certainly use water. You don't need the mica spray. You don't need to have the shimmer in it. You can get away with just water. And I'll share with you both samples. So this is my box of mica powders. This is from Arteza. Now, I had um, a couple people kind of question about mica powder. I've never heard this before, and I guess it's me being a bit ignorant. But apparently mica powder is generally sourced unethically. It's usually done through child labor. Um, and that's where a lot, if not most, of mica powder comes from. So I had a look into it because I've got this Arteza mica powder, which is the one that I use the most. And 
they specifically state on their website that they only use mica powder that is ethically sourced. So their mica powder comes from China rather than, I think it's India. And so that is really, really amazing about them. Now this box is around £41, I think, on offer. You get 60 bottles and 60 colours. So it works out to less than a pound a bottle. It's still a lot of money, but it's ethically sourced and it's lasted me forever. So I just wanted to give you a bit of that info because some people were confused about it. Some people were had challenged me on it, which is really nice. Um, so this is very ethically sourced. Um, so I feel quite happy using it, knowing that. Now the reason I'm telling you all this and the reason I'm sharing it all with you is because Arteza have sent me some to give to you. So this is yet another giveaway video. I feel like that's all I've done lately is done giveaway videos. Um, but I have had a lot of people so sad that they can't get Arteza's products um, because they might live in Australia or New Zealand, um, one of the countries that it doesn't ship to. So I'm going to do a giveaway and I'm going to give away um, to some people. I'll give you the details at the end of the video. So Arteza sent me a brand new box. There are a few people that I have privately selected that will also get some of these Arteza mica powders. So I will divide it up and share it out. Um, but this is my brand new box, which arrived today, which Arteza were more than happy for me to give away to you. So at the end of the video, I will share with you how you can enter. Um, everyone in the world is welcome to join. I don't ever limit my giveaways unless they're very heavy in weight. Um, I will always make sure that they're worldwide so anyone can join in. So, um, this is very, very exciting. Uh, so stay tuned to the end of the video. So if you would like to make a shimmer spray, then you need to pick a color. Um, I went with sort of one of each because I know I like to use a lot of pink, so I wanted a neutral, a couple neutral ones. So today, because I've got an orange already, um, I've got sort of a blue, um, I've got kind of a teal. I think we're gonna go with maybe um, quite a dark pink maybe this time. I did a light pink the last time. So I think we'll go with a darker pink this time. I think we'll go with maybe rose pink, which is this one here. So I lost the little spoon that came with these mica powders <laughs> quite a while ago, but I've got these little spatulas that came with some other containers. So that's what I'm gonna use. They come with a protective seal on them. You just take that off. And all I'm gonna do is sort of two spoonfuls um, or two ends worth. And I'm just gonna stick it straight into the bottle and shake it down. And then I'll go with the second one and dip that in there. Now originally I did try and mix it in a jar. I thought that that might work best. Um, but I found putting it straight into the bottle works the best way. Now one of the tricks I learned along the way as well, first thing I did was I put the mica powder in and then I filled it with water and then I shook it. And that is a bad mistake. I found that shaking mica powder, no matter what you've done, if you've already pre-mixed it or not, I found shaking mica powder a really bad idea. So when you're first creating it and you go and you shake it, it creates loads of bubbles. And then in the bubbles, the mica powder gets stuck. So it won't mix. And until those bubbles naturally pop inside that bottle um, and dissolve a little bit, that you just can't get rid of them and you can't get it to mix. So I waited like a whole day for these bubbles to pop before I then swirled it. So it's all about the swirling with the mica powder, not the shaking. If you shake it, you'll get bubbles in it and it'll be really irritating. So what I like to do is take my water spray bottle and just spray in quite a few pumps of water just so I can get the base kind of covered. You could pour in some water. I just like to spray it in. I find it helps to kind of mix it. So you're just gonna swirl it round until you can see it's not sticking to the sides anymore. You've not got any clumps of mica powder on those edges. Then you can go ahead and add in the rest of your water. Now I've said to people before, I keep this giant two liter bottle of water next to my desk just for things like this. So that's what I'm using. It's just tap water filled in here. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna fill it to the top. Well, mostly to the top. Always remember that you've got to account for this part of your sprayer to fit inside. So what I'm gonna do before I stick this in is swirl it round. And I'm just gonna swirl it for a few seconds because the mica pad, um, powder settles to the bottom extremely fast. And when it settles to the bottom, you then end up with it going straight into the nozzle. And that's how you get a clogged, um, a clogged bottle. So you're just gonna swirl it. And while you're swirling it, you're gonna get some scrap paper ready to give it a spritz. Because once we get that water into the tube of the spray bottle, we then don't get the clogging from the mica powder. So, so I've got this box here. It's just a standard A4 box. And that's what I've kind of been doing all my spraying in just to contain it so I don't get it all over my desk. The best scenario is to do it outside and do it on like your patio or your grass or something. So you can just do a whole ton at one go. When I started filming this, it was raining a lot. So it wasn't really working for me. Right, so we're gonna just spray it now. And now we've got it inside our little sprit spritzer. So whenever we want to go to use this, we're going to swirl it. So here's ice blue. You can see how the mica powder is settled on the bottom. Don't shake it. The instant you shake it, it could go up your little um, sprayer kind of tube thing. <laughs> um, and it'll clog it up. So you want to just gently swirl it and within seconds, it starts to mix. And you can see that gorgeous swirl. It's so much fun to watch. So there's the pink we just made and the ice blue. So now we've got our little sample done and we've got the spray inside the nozzle in there to prevent it from clogging. Now if you want a more subtle spray, then you could use one of the more neutral colors or put in less mica powder and you won't get as much pigment in your spray. When it comes to cardstock for making your card backings, you can either use watercolor cardstock or regular cardstock. I like them both, they both work, but I prefer the watercolor card. I find that you can stamp tons of them and when you go to spray it, it will always bleed and run really nicely, really quickly. Whereas the longer you leave plain cardstock to dry, the harder it is to get the colors to run and bleed. So it's nice if you want just the tiniest bit of movement in your color, but the watercolor card gives you a lot more movement. So I'll share with you both of them and what they look like. The watercolor card I'm using today is the Arteza um, Premium Watercolor Card. So I use this purely for card making. I don't use it for any kind of painting or anything like that because I'm not skilled. <laughs> um, you get 32 sheets, it's nine by 12 inches, and it's very thick, it's 300 GSM. So it's a nice thick front card front. I can easily get at least four card fronts out of each sheet, and you get two packs of this in each bundle. I'll link it down below if you wanna take a look, but any watercolor card should work for this technique. Um, the cardstock I'm using is, I think, 350 GSM, and it is my Lime Tree cardstock that I like to use. Now, how I get my cardstock to the size I want it to be is that I measure my stamps. So, for example, if I'm going to use this really beautiful flower stamp, then I measure how wide it is. So I like to take my T ruler, I'll measure it, and this is just shy of four and a half, and it's a circle, so I know it's gonna be four and a half by four and a half. So I might do it at four and three quarters by four and three quarters, and then stamp my image on it. And that's kind of how I base, how I get my card stock sizes, and how I get my card base sizes. I base it purely on the stamps that I'm using, or I'll cut a standard card size um, front. So this is just a bit shorter than a UK size card, and I'll just cut a standard card size front and then that way I can stamp my image anywhere on there and then I can add extra on like my sentence and things. So today I'm going to use this stamp here. Now I'm going to share with you a few different ways that you can go about um, using stamped images. I recommend using red rubber or photopolymer. If you're going to do this technique I would avoid using um, 
silicone stamps. So silicone stamps are the ones that are slightly cheaper, they're a lighter feeling, they're not as tacky as the photopolymer. Photopolymer are quite a tacky, sticky stamp. The only reason I suggest that is that a silicone stamp really has a hard time gripping ink unless you're going to use a pigment ink. Now if you use a pigment ink, you're not going to get the same effect. It's not going to run, it's not going to bleed. So you want to make sure you're using a water-based ink and you want to use a stamp that works with water-based ink. So that's why I'm choosing to use a photopolymer stamp. This is a tonic stamp and I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! inks um, because the Stampin' Up! ones are all water-based so they will work really well for this technique. Now you can use um, other inks like Distress inks would probably work although they don't always stamp the best um, but you can use other inks and I'm going to share with you some sort of tips and tricks along the way. There are a few different ways to do this method so you can use basically what you've got if you've got only silicone stamps, then I would recommend using a stamp platform for sure because your stamp platform will allow you to get that um, thicker image going on, especially when you go to do your um, top image if that's what you choose to do. So I realize there's been a lot of blabbering, but there's just been a lot of stuff I've learned along the way. So I want to make sure that I tell you all these great tips and tricks so that you don't have to worry about faffing and trying them out yourself. So I'm going to use this stamp platform here. This one is the Tim Holtz Tonic Stamp Platform. Um, and I'm going to use this one today. Now, the other thing that I found helpful was taking a bit of removable adhesive. So I've got the Dot and Dab. This is a very cheap, effective, double-sided removable adhesive. Now, the other thing I wanted to share quickly is if you're using watercolor card, depending on how textured your card is, um, will help you to work out which side to kind of use. So I find the textured side, I struggle to get a clearer image. I do have to do a lot more layers of stamping. So I might have to do it instead of once or twice for an impression, I might do it three to four times. So I like to use the smooth side of my watercolor card. It still gives me the same effect. Um, it just stamps clearer and smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and put like a little strip of my double-sided adhesive onto the back of my card just so it stays in the same place. I'm going to line it up with the three on the bottom of my stamping platform and then that way I know if it shifts or if it moves I just got to line it up with three again. Now I'm just going to use the standard card sides base for this um, stamp here and all I'm going to do is line it up where I want it to be on my piece of card. I'm going to pick it up now, you absolutely don't have to use a stamp platform. You can do it using um, stamping blocks, if that's what you've got. I'm gonna go ahead and use this lovely lipstick color. Now, you can do multiple colors on your stamp. If you've got finger daubers um, or a small bit of sponge, then you can most certainly add ink to the various bits of your project, and I'll share with that with you in a minute. You'll see my little sample. So you can add in ink and do multiple colors. Just make sure they're complementary colors and you're not gonna end up with a sort of poo brown kind of color if they blend together. I'm gonna use one color just to share with you how it goes. Now my ink pad is getting a bit dry so I do need to add some more ink to it. But I'm just gonna stick it down, stamp it. Sorry, I just ended up getting a bit of a phone call there. Right, I'm gonna ink it again because I wanna have lots of ink on there and my ink pad's getting a bit dry. This portion is not going to be as important because this is the bit we're gonna spray. So we've got our little image there. I'm gonna take it out. Then we're gonna bring in our box. And we've got our bit of card there. We're going to make sure we swirl our liquid. You can use just water or you can use your mica spray that you've just made. And we're just going to spritz it and you'll start to see the color go. Now you can do as much or as little so you could have lots of spray, lots of the color running or you could do just a little bit just to kind of get it slightly flowing. Don't forget if you sit there to look at it for a minute just swirl yours before you spray it again. I'm going to go a little bit more on the top bit. Oops, that was probably a little bit much but that gives you an idea of how much it can spread. Now we've got that one which is on the watercolor card. I'm going to stamp it now on plain card so you can see what it looks like and the difference. 
Okay, so we're gonna bring in our box. And this is again the plain card stock, not watercolor card. I'm gonna swirl, not shake. And we've not let it dry at all, so we're getting some decent sort of bleeding going on. So as I said, I like both bits of cardstock. However, I found the watercolor more productive if you want to do a whole bunch of stamping and then spray them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry these and then we can carry on. I'm just gonna use my heat gun to dry them. Okay, so we've got to this point now where they're both dry. We've got our watercolor card and our normal card. Now it's hard to tell, but there is a definite little sheen going on on the tops of our cards. We've got a little bit of shine going on. Now it would be the exact same with just plain water. You would just have all this spreading, but you wouldn't have that kind of shine. You could go in when you're finished and add the shine if you want, or just leave it without it. It either works great. I just have an addiction to shiny. <laughs> so, um, so what we're gonna do next is you have two options here. So you can either go back in, re-stamp it with your ink color to really make that color pop again. Now, if you did multiple colors, then you could add in those colors again and make it pop. Or what I really like to do is use a darker color, like a black, and go in and stamp the black on top. So I will do the darker color with, um, or my ink on top of the ink, and I'll do the black on top of that one, just so you can see what they look like. So you just get this kind of darker image on top of your sort of bleeding spreading of ink um, going on. Now my favorite black to use is the Versafine Onyx Black. It is a pigment ink, so this will not run. If you do change your mind, you want to add more color afterwards, you want to spray more, you want to add something else, this will not react with water. So it's a really good one to use. And we get this stunning image. I absolutely love it. I love this technique and how easy it is to do. I got so carried away and I did probably 50 card bases. I just kept going and going and going. I had so much fun. I got a whole bunch of stamps out that I've not touched before. Um, I found bigger images, bigger stamped images like this one worked amazingly well for this technique. You could really fill up a card with it. I'll share with you all the stamps that I've used. You could also take another stamp set that's got multiple images and you could do multiple images. You could do like a whole scene and stamp them all out in the colors, spray it all, then come in with your black and stamp over top. So we've got these two beautiful, both equally beautiful backgrounds ready to go. Now, the way my brain kind of works and how I sort of do my cards is I do all my backgrounds. I get them all stamped and all done. So for example, I did some star ones like this. I'll share with you the stamp sets in a minute. I get all my backgrounds done. I just do a whole bunch like so. Then the next thing I do is I go in and I might ink my edges of my card. I might make that kind of edge stand out a bit more and pop out a bit more. And I might emphasize and highlight the edge of that piece of card. So I've got another one here, which has got the edges done. Then what I do is I do my um, mounts for all of my backgrounds. So I go and I find whatever card stock I want that I think is going to match. I might go glitter, I might go foil, I might go the same color as the ink pad. I find a color I like, I work out how big I want my edge to be, and then I do all those same ones at the same time so that I'm not making an error in my cutting. So I know that these ones I pre-cut for my rows at four inches by four inches. So I stamped all my roses. I did multiple different colors for them. Then I went through, found out, found um, all my sort of backing bits of card, my mount card that I wanted for all of them. And I cut all of them. Generally, I do about a quarter of an inch bigger, which then gives me an eighth of an inch on each side. Um, this one is is a bit bigger, so this one in total was four and a half by four and a half. So it's, it's bigger than I would normally do, but I quite like the look of that one. And it was left over from the one that I did that was slightly bigger. So I get all my mount, bits of card, I mount them all, then I make my card bases for all of them. And then I do the insides, if I'm gonna do the insides, and then 
I will do the sentiment or word on the top and then I will do the embellishments and that's kind of my steps that I do to do bulk making so with these ones here the next step I would do would be to ink all my edges on this one I would probably black the edges so that they match with the black in the middle on this one I would probably ink with the same pink and I just take my sponge and all I do is just ink up the edges and just kind of brush it on or you could brush it on like that and I would go and make all these edges so that it kind of stands out and pops a bit more and that's kind of what I would do as my second step with all these then I would get my cardstock whatever color I want to use um, I would obviously have it big enough and I would measure it to be just a bit bigger on all edges and then cut my card bases so those are kind of my steps on how I do all this I wanted to share with you all the stamps that I did and then share with you all the samples I made so this is the base technique I'm not going to do a full decorated card because I'm going to share with you the full decorated cards that I've already done but this is your base technique you just need one stamp one stamp maybe two inks or you could just have one stamp one ink a bottle of water you're good to go if you've got mica powder or some old makeup you could crush up and stick into it then you can make a shimmer or a glimmer spray and you just get these stunning gorgeous backgrounds and it is so much fun and you can tell it's so much fun because I've spent two solid days <laughs> sitting in my office spraying everything and having a jolly good time okay first I'm gonna share this bundle with you now this is really fun because if you've got layering stamps this technique just goes up another level which is really really cool now I picked these up a while ago these are all layering stamps so in this set they're all photopolymer you get three stamps one two three and the idea is is that you can layer them with different colored inks you can do different combinations of each of those layers and get different effects now what I wanted was the most colorful layer and the most detailed layer and just use two of the layers so in my set I've obviously not used number two <laughs> I've used the first layer which is quite a fat kind of detailed layer I did this one in my ink and then sprayed this one then I came in with my black or my darker ink, either a different color dark ink or the same color again and stamped over it with this detailed image. So you could do it with just this one image, spray it and stamp over it like I shared with you already. But if you've got a layering stamp set, this makes it extra super fun and it can be such a blast. You can get so many techniques. So this butterfly one here, is what I use for this background so you can see I stamped it in a light purple sprayed it and then I stamped that detailed one in the black over top and then I've taken my thank you die from Alina shop stuck it on and I will finish this off with some more gems um, possibly another little something down below under the thank you but that is what I did with that one there I then did it in a teal kind of green and I came over it with a dark one so two colors I used Bermuda Bay and then Pretty Peacock and that's what I did for the two colors on this one so I didn't use the black I used those two darker colors and then I came in and I inked the edge I think I inked the edge either in black or that same actually probably the same Pretty Peacock color um, obviously you can see I matted it I put the word on and again I'll come in with some gems I haven't finished all of them because it was taking me so long to do them all um, but I've mounted that on a card base, but they're just such a fun effect now these two I've also done I did this one in a light pink and then I came in and stamped it again in the same color But because I sprayed it so much I made it bleed loads and you can't actually get the same effect to it as you normally would um, But they're the same color the top one and the background color and this is just using water and then I've gone in and stuck on some of Alina's flat back gems to kind of accent it and stuck on friends and then I've inked the edges in black as well to kind of make that pop a bit more this one I added loads of the shimmer spray to it and I've added some gems onto just the flowers on it and added the word hello and I've obviously inked the edges in that same red this is the lovely lipstick again 
and with this one I just stamped it in the lovely lipstick for the background color sprayed it and then stamped the same color over top again so you just get the most beautiful effects now the next one is this B one again it comes in a set of three and I used the first one and the last one to do my stamped image it's the exact same again these are all 4.1 by 5.8 inches or 10.4 by 14.7 centimeters so they're more of a, a UK size sort of craft um, a UK size kind of card front so I did this shine bright one and this one I love I sprayed it with the gold spray I made so I've got this one here which is light gold and when you swirl it it's just stunning so I sprayed that all over a yellow and I came in with the black so it's just the one layer underneath and then the black with that gold shiny spray it looks amazing I love how it came out and then I did a gold for that background um, matte on it then I did the same this is the same one but I did a pink and a black instead of the yellow and I found that stamp in with the other stamps I was using and so I did your limited edition friend I thought that was quite clever and I'll probably go in and add some little gems on the top of that to kind of finish this card off but these layering stamps are loads of fun so I've also got this flower one um, and then this flower one here they are fantastic fun you can really do a lot with them. So I'm so pleased I bought these ages ago because I've been having a blast with them. So next up is this stamp set that I was showing you. This was in my 5K giveaway. So four, I think it was four lucky people got this stamp set here. It's got this huge stamp. It's a Tonic Studios stamp set. And it comes with really awesome sentiments. So this is where I got that You Are Limited Edition on here. Um, I have also used Shine and Bright and I've cut them in half and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but it's got some extra great little stamps in there. So I did this one with hugs, I die cut it out and then I stamped it or I inked it up in the same pink and then I did the same thing and spritzed my hugs. But my background is just done with water. So there's no shine to my background. I spritzed the word instead of the background. And with this one, I spritzed it and then I stamped it obviously with the same color and added some gems to finish it off. And I've got this really fun textured pearlescent cardstock as my mat on the back of that. Then I did Shine Bright, which I love. And then instead of the little eye dots, mostly because they were a right pain in the butt <laughs> to try and layer up because I've layered all my, um, all my words have been layered three times. So to layer up, teeny tiny little dots for the eyes was a nightmare so I just thought I would use jewels instead so I've cheated there and this is obviously done on watercolor cardstock and I've sprayed it and then stamped it in the same color inked up the edges and I've got this sort of teal pearlescent card behind it which is really lovely now here's that stamp again where I did you are limited edition stamp that down and I actually spent the time putting that little dot together three times and I inked it up in black and then I did it on a black pearlescent card base I love using black card so on the inside I obviously did another layer so I could write in it and I did it in pearlescent card on the inside as well and this is nice and shimmery um, with my pink spritz that I used that I love this one I love this yellow one. Oh, we're moving on to the next stamp already. I didn't even twig that we're on a different stamp. Let me grab that one. This one is my new favorite stamp. I am going to be using this probably quite a lot coming up. I bought it ages ago. I don't know why I haven't used it. Um, I will link everything I can that I'm using today. I will try and do my best to find it and link it for you in the description box below. This one I know is still in stock on Craft Stash. I had a look because my friend Natasha really wants it. And so I had a look to see if I could get it for her. Um, it is stunning. And all I've used is that rose. And then I did Wishing You a Beautiful Day. But I've chopped it all up. And you'll see how I've used that on a different card. But here's the bright that I chopped up from the last one. So I'm not afraid to cut my stamps in half to make sure I get more words. But this said shine bright and I had the word shine. So I thought that was perfect that I could just cut that off and use that word on the bottom there. And I again used a little flat back gem from Alina's shop instead of doing the silly little sticking them together. And I love how this turned out. I used the gold with my yellow ink and it was 
stunning. I love it so much. Now I've not finished off any more of my roses ones yet. I've got a whole bunch of um, sentiment stamp, uh, sentiment dies coming from Alina. So I plan to use those, but I did a whole bunch that I can have ready to go and then I've got a whole bunch that are finished that just need a sentiment and I've done that intentionally so that if I need a card like a sympathy or a birthday or a thank you I can kind of quickly make it up as I go. I found this box in my stash and what I have done is I have decided to make little sections for where I can put things. Now I got a bit smarter and I did label it with my labeling machine <laughs> instead of my terrible writing because I was really struggling to write happy birthday on that on an angle. But I plan to cut a whole bunch of sentiments like I've got thinking of you in my general um, and I've got Merry Christmas in there and if I have these sentiments ready to go and if they're done on white cardstock I can just dye them the color that I want using an ink pad and then I've got a whole bunch of sentiments at the ready so if I need a card I can then just come to my stash of cards that are ready to go and just need a sentiment and I can do that. So this is probably my favorite one of all of them. I just love the way the color ran. I love the way that rose looks. I just, I love the colors I used. I really just love this card so much that I've not put anything on it. And I might not, I might just give it to the recipient like this. Again, it's on black. And so I've stuck that insert on in the inside. But this is watercolor card. And this is the kind of stunning effect you can get with watercolor card versus using normal card. This is another favorite. This is chameleon blue. So it looks red. It looks this weird kind of color. You can see the color. So it's kind of a red color, but it's got a blue tinge to it. Really hard to capture with my silly bright light. But if I hold this like this, can you see the blue? So it sprays on kind of like a brownie red, but it's got a blue sheen to it. It is so super cool. So there are four or five chameleon colors in the pack of Arteza mica powders. And this is chameleon blue. So it is so cool. <laughs> I love how it's turned out. Um, and just that effect, this rose is just so stunning. Again, I did it on the black. So I've done a layer on the inside. I've got it in yellow again with the gold. Then I did it in the teal blue with the blue spritzer um, and I backed it with some blue teal blue glitter. Then this is using the chameleon blue so you get kind of this crazy look and whatever angle you look at it, it just looks different. It's really cool. So those are my rose ones that I will add sentiments to. Um, again this is from Apple Blossom, I'll try and link it down below for you. Then the next stamp set I used is this one here. Now this again was one of my giveaway stamps. I gave four of these away. It's got this gorgeous big one up here. This is a tonic stamp set and lots of really great stamps um, sentiments on there. So I did this really cute one and this is where I've come in with different colors. So I used a sponge and I sponged on pink on the flowers and sponged green along the edges, then sprayed it and came in with the black. And I did a little bit of dimension there with on you a beautiful day. Hand cut that out. <laughs> we fussy cut that one. Um, I love how this card turned out. And again, I wanted to avoid my little white dots, so I put some pearls on there. I've got my textured pearlescent card in the background. Um, and obviously the inside is just blank so I can write my message. And so again, I made my card bases based on the stamp. I always measure my stamp and then I decide how big my card's going to be. Then I've got thank you and I did this in the teal blue for the outside and a light pink for that flower and sprayed it with the blue and then I've got this hello one and you can see the texture difference here when you've got the bumpy side of the watercolor card you can see that texture kind of showing through on your stamping I found you got the same effect if you use the front or the back of the watercolor card. So I went with the back for a lot of them after I had some frustration with having to stamp so many times for the um, 
more rough side. Then I've also got this one, which I did the same colors as before. I just sprayed a bit less so that color kind of was contained more. And I haven't finished that one off yet, but I've got it mounted and on a card base. So it's ready to go. Then I've got this one here as well, which I did in an orange and a green. And sprayed that and the orange really did run quite a lot. And I backed it with the same colored green. Um, it just needs to go on a card base. So now I'm going to share with you all the ones that I haven't finished yet. Um, just so you can see the magnitude of how many I made and how quick and easy they were to make. So I have got my next one. I use this stamp set here, which this is still available on Craft Stash. I bought this a while ago. They have a lot of stamps like this where they have the background image with a word that can go in the middle. So this is really fun for this technique as well. So I've got a few samples to share with you. I've not finished these off completely. I might stick some gems on. I might leave them as they are. Um, oh, I used up my scraps as well. So I left all my scraps in a pile and then I really went and used them up. So for these little ones, these were my scraps of leftover watercolor card. So all I did was I just took them and I cut a mount for them. Then I used my leftover um, vanilla card stock that were my leftover strips from doing my big squares. And I just stuck them on there and I'll probably maybe add in like a silver border on the tops and bottoms maybe to make that pop a bit more. Um, but this was loads of fun. So I did star and I just stamped the middle with the black. Then I did gold embossing with Alina's gold embossing powder and I sprayed it obviously with gold as well to make that star kind of run a bit. Then this one I did with Alina's blue um, embossing powder and stamped star in the middle of that one. And these are all cards that are finished and ready for anything else that I want to put on there. Now this, this was that chameleon blue again. That was this one that looks like a brownie red. That's how that one looked on this deep dark blue ink. So from like that kind of angle you can see it's brown but from that angle it's this stunning blue. And I did the same on this one and I've embossed it with Alina's um, silver embossing powder but the way the two have come out differently I just sprayed, I think, one big spray, and obviously the spray went like that. And on this one I sprayed a few, and so you get a totally different look on each of those cards. And again, on the inside I have added some mounts to them, using up my scrap bits that I had in my leftover bits, um, just to kind of make the most of those scraps so they didn't go to waste. Then here are a few more where I did some color in the middle, and then I did yellow in the middle and then pink on the outside and sprayed them. This is watercolor card, this is regular white card. So you can see the differences there in those two. Both beautiful and stunning. This one is watercolor card but the back side of the watercolor card. And what I did on this one was I stamped it in color, then I stamped the black, then I sprayed it. So you get a more muted black if you spray the black first or if you put the black down first and then spray. So you get the bleeding still going on from the color, but you get a lot more muted black because that black has been covered up by the mica powder. So if I'd used just water, you could probably get away with doing your colors and your black and it would still look almost the same. So that was really good fun. Then I did another one here where I used a lot of shimmer powder and went a little crazy on it. Got this gorgeous card here. Then I've got another one of the B ones and I've got quite a few of the purple ones um, with the layers. I did pink and teal. Um, there's my B with some gold behind and there's another purple with the purple spray over top. So the colored spray doesn't make that much of a difference unless you add a lot of it for the pigment to stick but it gives you a hint of that color. So you get a hint of purple, whereas you would get like maybe just a hint of white and you kind of see a bit of white. So I liked using the colored micas on the colored ink, but you don't need to, you can use whatever you've got. Now, here are my scraps. So these are ones that I trimmed down to make more out of what I was doing. So this was a full size one and I trimmed it down and then I used the scraps that I had that were left over from my other cards and made some patterns out of it. 
I made little panels. I will put some words on here. I've got thank you I could put down the side there. I'll finish these off for sure. But I wanted to share with you how you can use your scraps and your leftover bits or how you can cut them up to make more. Now this one was an oopsie. I didn't get my stamp lined up quite right, so it was just slightly off. And I didn't mind it too much, but when I was trimming it down, I accidentally cut a chunk of it off rather than getting nice and close to the edge, I actually took the edge off. So I thought rather than chuck it and waste it, I would just chop out the middle and get just the flowers out of that image instead of sort of the whole thing. I just took the middle image out of it and popped it up on some foam and I just thought that looked really stunning and classy and I could put a little bit of string around there or something, a little twine bow. It would look gorgeous. Now I wanted to also share with you my oopsie. I thought I would try something out where I would stamp my image and then shift it just slightly down with my black and stamp it again. And it just looks like a really big crazy mess. So I don't recommend doing that. I did try it because I thought, ooh, maybe it would give a cool shadow and maybe if I kept it a bit closer to the line it would have a bit more of a shadow, but I did it a couple times and for the most part I just found it to be really hard on your eyes to look at, so I wouldn't really recommend doing that. So I hope you had a great time today with me. I hope you learned some things, some tips, some tricks. Um, I hope you'll give this a go. I've got a Facebook group if you'd like to join me over there and share with me your creations. I am also on Craft World, which is a basically an online sort of Facebook group, um, but for crafters only. I'm over there, so pop over there, send me a friend request, um, and share your cards with me over there. Um, now for the giveaway. So all the details for this giveaway are there on the screen for you. It's going to be a two week long giveaway from today until two weeks from today, which the dates are on the screen and in the description box. Anyone can enter. The only thing you need to do to enter is to tell me in the description box that you would like to enter. If you do not say you want to enter, I won't include you in it because I don't want to include people that really would like not to be included. So make sure you say, I would like to be in your giveaway, something that affects that I know that you want to be involved. And I will pick six random winners and you will each receive six mica powders. So if you could please let me know if you'd like to be in my giveaway. It is worldwide and I will post them to you wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. Please don't forget to subscribe to my videos and I'll see you all soon. Bye.